Lily Tomlin has been a screen icon for decades. But how did she get her start? How did she handle her fight with David O. Russell? Why was she arrested? Stay tuned to watch Lily Tomlin's transformation. Lily Tomlin was born on September 1, 1939 in Detroit, Michigan, and her name at birth was Mary Jean Tomlin. Tomlin's parents relocated to Michigan before she was born, and Tomlin has since gone on to tell M Live that she wouldn't trade her childhood for anything. She told the publication that her old stomping grounds were an ideal place to grow up, describing her former neighborhood as, quote, filled with people, a soup of humanity. Though she didn't grow up wealthy, Tomlin said her experiences with people in her hometown exposed her to people in wealthier neighborhoods. She noted to M Live, I was always conscious politically that there were people who had everything and who had nothing, but I was so madly in love with people and how they behaved, I went there anyway. In fact, Tomlin still makes trips to Detroit every so often, and even has family members who still live in the area, as of 2014 when the interview was published. For those who have followed Lily Tomlin's career, it's nearly impossible to imagine her doing anything besides acting in comedy. However, as she told the Chicago Reader, Tomlin actually entered college intending to study medicine, though she actually enrolled in the pre-nursing program at Wayne State University instead, explaining, I was never going to be a doctor. I wasn't a good enough student. While in college, according to biography, Tomlin discovered her love for theater and left school to pursue acting instead. Her path to comedic success wasn't a straight shot, though. She told Interview that, like many performers, she worked a string of jobs related to the field before making it. Those jobs included performing on local TV shows, waitressing at Howard Johnson's, and even working as a bookkeeper. Lily Tomlin took the plunge and moved to Los Angeles in the summer of 1969, the same year the comedy show Laughin' began. Tomlin made her laugh in debut on December 29, 1969, and later told the Sun Sentinel she was surprised to be recognized not long after, saying, I went to the market and a woman said, You're the new star on Laughing, aren't you? And I said, No, 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 I'm not a star. Tomlin was best known for playing two characters on the show, five-year-old Edith Ann and phone operator Ernestine. And Tomlin explained to TV Insider that Ernestine was a character she had invented prior to the show. In fact, Laughin' producer George Slatter saw her perform the character before asking her to join the show, explaining, I was doing Ernestine in my stand-up act, which I had to beg people to book, and George saw me and just loved them. This is Miss Tomlin of the telephone company. Do I have the party to whom I am speaking? Tomlin added that the two characters were so popular, in fact, that she continues to perform them both during stand-up routines. As Tomlin explained to TV Insider, it's the least she can do, since the show changed her career, saying, It was the best thing that ever happened to me, absolutely. I was terribly fortunate to fall into that show at the time. Lily Tomlin surprised audiences when she took on the role of Linnea Reese in 1975's Nashville. As Criterion explains, it was unexpected for her to take on a character that has been described as, quote, an emotional anchor in a film full of wayward souls. Tomlin herself actually leaned toward a more comedic role in the movie before meeting the rest of the cast, but told Vanity Fair that she quickly learned to trust director Robert Altman's vision, realizing that if the rest of the cast were right for their parts, she was too, saying, I must be more right for this part than I think I am, and I got nominated for an Oscar for it, so he must have been right. In 1980, Lily Tomlin joined forces with Jane Fonda and Dolly Parton in the movie 9 to 5. Fonda even said on The Ellen DeGeneres Show that she changed the entire movie around after seeing Tomlin perform stand-up. As Fonda explained, I just could not believe that so many people live inside of this amazing body, and so I totally changed the entire idea of 9 to 5 because of her, because I don't want to make a movie about secretaries if she's not in it. Funnily enough, Tomlin actually rejected Fonda at first. As Tomlin told the Glasgow Evening Times, she had just spent seven months on another movie and didn't think she could handle this one too. Tomlin's partner, Jane Wagner, was the one who told her to take the role. In fact, as Tomlin put it, Wagner insisted, telling her, this is the biggest mistake of your life. You've got to get on the phone and tell Jane Fonda you want to take back the resignation. Lily Tomlin and Jane Wagner seem to have the kind of relationship that many people aspire to, though their partnership began as a professional one. The two were first introduced in the 1970s and have been together for over 50 years. Both are exceedingly talented. Prevention notes that Wagner is a successful writer, director, and producer. Tomlin told Metro Weekly that she approached Wagner first, hoping that the two could work together on Tomlin's upcoming comedy project. Wagner didn't get back to her right away, and Tomlin was surprised when she received word from Wagner a week before she was set to record the comedy album. She explained, I persuaded her to come to California and help me produce it. Frankly, I was pretty taken with her as soon as I saw her. As shared by People, Lily Tomlin and Jane Wagner got married in 2013 after being together for over four decades. After it was possible to get married, I had no recourse but uh, to get married. <laughs> 
Tomlin has maintained that she's always been happy they didn't have kids. As she told The Guardian, while she can sometimes understand the appeal, she explained that parenthood just wasn't for her, saying, We say every day, I'm so glad we didn't have any children. When I think of the world now, I don't want to even deal with having to raise a child. While speaking to comedian Kevin Nealon in 2019, Tomlin doubled down on the idea that parenthood wasn't a road that she was ever meant to travel, saying, I didn't really think it through. It would have been terrible if we'd have done it. When Lily Tomlin joined the cast of 2004's I Heart Huckabees, she probably didn't realize that the experience would result in an onset explosion that would reverberate throughout Hollywood for years to come. Fans were shocked when a video surfaced that appeared to show Tomlin enduring verbal abuse on set from the film's director, David O. Russell. While the video was heated, it seemed that Tomlin and Russell were able to make up. Tomlin later told Movieline that the experience actually wasn't a big deal and likened their argument to one that many people have at home, revealing that they got right back to filming around 20 minutes after the infamous video was shot, saying, We were always doing something, and then we'd get manic and crazy and I just flipped out on him. Then he flipped out on me, and you know, stuff goes on. But it's nothing. It's like family. In 2015, Lily Tomlin joined forces with Jane Fonda once again when the pair were cast as the title characters on Netflix's Grace and Frankie. In the show, Tomlin and Fonda play a pair of wives who find out their husbands are gay and leave them to be in a relationship with one another. While Grace and Frankie don't begin the show as friends, they are thrust into a new, unexpected path where they soon form a deep bond. Tomlin told IndieWire that something special about the show is that it's a comedy that contains a lot of emotional depth, explaining, The characters come up against an emotional wall that they have to either circumvent or barrel their way through, and we just want to be true to that, that's all. I mean, that's life." As The Observer noted, the show has proven to be a career highlight for both Tomlin and Fonda alike, making the actresses relevant to a brand new audience at what would traditionally be thought of as the tail end of their careers. According to The Observer, Grace and Frankie is the kind of show that makes powerful feminist arguments against ageism and towards sex positivity in women, both young and old. While many of us know and love Lily Tomlin for her career, the actor has also spent quite a lot of time advocating for causes that she believes in. As shared by Look to the Stars, Tomlin and her wife, Jane Wagner, produced and narrated a documentary called An Apology to Elephants. The site notes that Tomlin is an avowed animal rights activist who supports moving elephants out of zoos and instead into sanctuaries. Tomlin and her good friend Jane Fonda are also both environmental activists, and the pair have even been arrested together while participating in Fonda's environmentally focused Fire Drill Friday protests. Lily, you all, you got arrested too, right? One time. Oh, okay. <laughs> it pales in comparison. Although Grace and Frankie will air its last episodes in 2022, this doesn't mean that Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda will stop working together. In fact, The Hollywood Reporter announced in September 2021 that the two will co-star in the upcoming film Moving On. The news was likely enthusiastically received by fans of the pair, who love watching them work together. It's also likely that Fonda and Tomlin are just as enthusiastic about the opportunity as their fans. After all, as Tomlin once said in an interview for Oprah.com, people say we have a lot of chemistry. That's because you can sense that Jane and I have been friends for so long. We have a soft spot for each other. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite award-winning actors are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.